Good morning. How you doing? Hi, Coach. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm a little, I'm not looking too bright here. So, um, oh, you look fantastic. Well, I just want to start off by, first of all, uh, introducing what we're doing. Um, okay. Since we're all here stuck at home or you're outside in your backyard, um, I thought maybe it'd be a good time for me to share. Uh, introduce some of our coaches from around the around the state um i have so much admiration and respect for all the job you guys are doing so i thought i'd call it uh, coaching colorado and well you're my guinea pig you're gonna be my first interview and we'll just spend a little time find out who travis ward is uh aka tito as he's known affectionately in the soccer world and uh, maybe share some of your thoughts with uh, Colorado soccer. So, um, first of all, how are you doing? How are you hanging in there? Hanging in there, yeah. Just uh, it's my two dogs, Cat and my wife, and we uh, spend a lot of time with each other. But um, spend a lot of time on these things, these Zoom meetings with my team. So that that's keeping me going. What what exactly have you done in in the Zoom meetings? What do you do exactly? Well, it's cool that you can share your screen, so I show them maybe some videos. I have them demo some stuff. Um, yesterday, I just had each player say something that they admire about their teammates, just trying to get more of a connection uh, mentally with the players because I know they, uh, they're they excited to, to see each other. They light up, and uh, I'm sure they're bored. So those are some things we do, some some uh, tactical ideas but but really their eyes start glossing over at that point so i'm trying to keep it as much fun as possible just the the connection i understand i think i don't think you, you notice my uh, growth kind of look like uh, like you do at times yeah i usually have it but I, i've cut cut it off because my wife's getting bored of it so um i'll probably grow it back for the season here in a, in a few weeks hopefully I don't know if I did. I, I don't know if I introduced myself. My name, I'm Mike Freitag, Director of Coaching for Colorado Soccer Association. So I think I forgot to say that at the beginning. If I did, I just repeated it. So Everybody uh, knows you. Nah, I don't know. Tito, a uh, couple things. You know, First of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're growing up with the game. Um, I know I think Brazil plays a big part in your, your, your soccer development. So give us a little background. Yeah, my uh, my mom mom's Canadian, my dad's American, and they got married and became missionaries in Brazil. So they they've been missionary, or they were missionaries for about thirty years. So I was born and raised in Brazil myself. Uh, my older brothers as well. They they were born there, but they they were raised a lot, a good portion of their youth there. Um, obviously, living there, it's it's more of a religion than a sport. I think soccer, and um, you you learn to love the game, and that's that's where I got into the game is uh, just. Uh, you know, playing with friends on the streets and uh, not really even playing organized soccer till I was maybe a, almost a teenager. But that's where you um, get your obsession with the game. And then coaching-wise, obviously, when you start realizing you're not good enough to play at the level you want to play, you start thinking, hey, maybe I should teach others to try and be at, at that level. Um, so that's where I got it. And obviously having two older brothers that played the game and were very good at it, um, you just tried to follow in their footsteps as well. And, and all three of us now coach here in Colorado. So yeah, let's, um, let's talk about that. I know, I know the one, I know Zico pretty well, but I don't, uh, I'm not real familiar with your other brother. So give us a he's, little. He's probably the, the best coach of the three of us. He coaches at pride and we're trying to recruit him up here, but candy is not very happy whenever I say that. Um, <laughs> but his, uh, my brother and sister-in-law that live in the Springs, uh, their kids played at Pride the entire time. They're, they're grown up now out of the house. But um, he's the reason I came to Colorado, because when you're a, a poor college kid, uh, on breaks, you need to go somewhere and stay somewhere. And he, he lived in the Springs, so I would, uh, I would stay with them. Uh, I was there at the, the birth of both my niece and nephew, which is pretty cool. But that's what brought me out here. Um, following him first and then when, following Zico. When, when was that, Tito? When did you come to I moved here in 99. 99. I moved here in 99 after college, yeah. So uh, did you play in college, I assume? Yeah, Liberty University, Lynchburg, Liberty University, Virginia. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so moved out here in 99 uh, following my second brother, Zico, who now works for us at United. He, um, 
had a job waiting for me as an assistant rec director, and I've been doing nothing but soccer since. Well, that's that's not really a job, is it? No, it's not. I mean, sometimes it is, but overall, I wouldn't trade it. Right. So, uh, what position did you play growing up or when you played in college? Well, everybody wants to be a center midfielder, but um, you end up running into better players, and you can't have 11 center midfielders, so you end up playing outside back. And I think uh, majority of the time, I, I like to play in the middle of midfield, maybe holding midfield a six or an eight, but uh, I ended up playing a lot of outside back. Marcel? Marcelo? Uh, he's on the left side, maybe Cafu. Oh, okay. Oh, Cafu? Yeah, okay. I, I met him. <laughs> I met him. So, um, so you came to Colorado. Um, currently, what is, what's your, uh, your title, and, and what do you do for uh, Colorado United? So I'm the technical director at, at United. Um, I've been here at Colorado United in Littleton for 12 years. I started as actually uh, the rec or on the rec side, their rec plus program. Um, then I, I just changed roles and now I'm technical director, but I mostly emphasize the 11 through 14 competitive boys. I coach two teams in that age group as well. Now you've coached girls also in the past, haven't you? I have. Um, I've coached girls at this club. Um, I've coached, you know, I prefer coaching boys, got to be honest. And everybody's got their preference, but I have coached girls. Um, I've had, I think, two or three girls teams here at United. And um, when I started, my first ever team at Storm was um, a girls team. And that was back in, I think, 2004 was my first competitive team. And we had the, we had a very good team. We ended up uh, being one of the best teams. Uh, there was Rush and Real was really good. And then there was this girl that played over at, I think it was Arvada Edge for one season. And man, was she so good. Um, and then unfortunately, she went over after a season to rush and they became super good. Um, and her <laughs> name was Lindsay Horan. So I, I got Oh, to yeah. That's, she's, she's, done so, right. she's done all right. She's done all right. She's done all right. And we'll talk um, about it here in a few minutes, I think. Now, when you're, when you're, when you're talking um, about coaching boys and girls, what do you find to be the difference in, in your approach? Or is there a difference? I, yeah, I think there has to be a difference. I mean, I, I think uh, the connection with girls, um, you have it right away. You can, uh, you know, but you need to keep it. You need to be positive. You need them to really look up to you and, and feel that you care completely. Whereas with boys, same thing. They do need to know that you care, but you can be a little bit more, I guess, uh, I use the word demanding. My wife got mad at me, but you can be a little more demanding and you can, uh, you know, approach it a little bit different. You got to be positive with both of them. But you can still get some results um, being a little tougher on boys at times. Um, but each kid's a set different as well. I mean, I've had some girls that you can be as demanding as you want and uh, or push as hard as you want. They they still really, uh, you know, accept that. I just uh, finished the book, uh, Every Moment Matters. I think it's by John, John O'Sullivan, a good friend of mine. And he has a chapter in there about coaching boys and girls. And it's, it's funny. It's when this, somebody gave, gave me a saying about the co difference between coaching boys and girls. Girls have to feel good to play good. Boys have to play good to feel good. And uh, I, I think there's some truth to that. So, um, so again, your current role, you're currently uh, are you coaching teams right now at this point in time? I do. I have an 07 boys team. And an 09 boys team. So, you know, getting my fix of the 11 v 11 game and the 9 v 9 game, they're uh, both of them first year of 9 v 9, first year of 11 v 11. So, yeah, right. love doing that. Uh, so, as you go through and you're, you're coaching, as you coach these, these young players, uh, is there anything that, that stands out that you see as deficiencies or things? um that stand out with players a generality of colorado players um i do deficiencies i know you like to talk about the defending side of the ball and i'll talk about uh both the attacking and and uh defending thirds i think uh just the execution aspect of it uh we you know we go out of state or whether you're doing odp stuff or far west regional league or whatever you're doing and it's amazing how often you feel like you dominate a game in the middle of the field but when it really matters, the defending third and the attacking third, we just aren't executing as well. 
Uh, we're not that, finishing that's necessarily. That goes back to what you said. Everybody wants to be a central midfielder. They, that's very <laughs> true. They do. And we, I think we've emphasized that so much that we end up um, creating great teams that play good soccer. But those two, thir those two thirds really were not executing as well. And I guess more than anything is just soccer strength. I see us running into some players that aren't necessarily big or they're not necessarily uh, – they shouldn't be stronger than us when you're playing teams from other states. But it just seems like their so soccer strength. They ride tackles better. They're able to hold the ball and get out of tough situations a lot better than we are. So um, I'd say soccer strength is probably the number one thing. Do you, do you uh, as a club, address that in any way? Uh, we do. We, we do some off-season training, obviously. We, we – uh, want to emphasize winning individual battles, whether it's offensive or defensive. Um, we, we work so much on possession at times, we don't work on enough finishing or enough 1v1 battles. But I think that's something we're trying to emphasize is definitely winning those individual battles because we've all seen teams that dominate a game, but the two or three chances on each side of the field um, make the difference. So those individual battles. Do, do you... Uh see anything as, as, as a strength of Colorado soccer and the players? Yeah, I think I, what I said, and it's probably more team-oriented, but the, the desire for players to play a good style, majority of players, you know, I, I said I moved here in 99. I coached my first team in 2004 here. And to be honest, the teams now and the players now are so much better. I'm sure that's across the whole country, but in Colorado it is night and day how much better you the players you don't see, are. You don't see many bad players anymore. You don't see. You don't. And it used to be, you know, there were two or three good teams in the state and everybody else was way behind them. Now you can have 10, 12, 15 teams that you go watch their game and be like, you know, that's an actually entertaining game to watch. The players are trying to do the things the right way and, and they're executing. So, how, how would you describe your style of coaching? I mean, I've been, a, I've been a fan of yours watching you work with players, and I, I have one key word I think is in your style, but uh, I want to hear okay. you. Uh, I would say one phrase, and I always say this with my players because I want them to, to really embrace it, is attention to detail, and it's everything, whether it's movement off the ball, body position, first touch, um, you know, doing things properly. Uh, you know, attention to detail is the big thing because I, I want the players to, to – not only understand or to not only be able to do something, but understand why they're doing it and why, um, you know, it might be the right thing in a certain situation. But then after that, try and foster some creativity and, and let them make decisions for themselves. Once you give them some tools, now they can decide how they're going to use it. I'm excited to see what word, uh, hear what word uh, you've got for me. You know, the word I hear, uh, I mean, uh, word I think of when I watch you coach is fun. Um, okay. I, I think you oh, have a different fun. direction. Hopefully that's right. What's that? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that is true. That's well, I think I, I, all I, the kids I, at start least playing. I know. At least I know you have fun. Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, I think sometimes we we take it too seriously in the sense of how we coach. But I watch you. You inter your interactions with the players. You, there's times to joke, but there's times to be serious also. And I I, I like that approach. Because I think it's it's supposed to be fun. That's the reason you're out there. Um, well, it is, and that's why they start. And it, it, I think it's a compliment sometimes when parents actually stick around and watch your training sessions. And after the game, they said, "I had so much fun watching your training sessions." So I think that's that's a good way to put it, I guess. Well, I, I uh, like I said, I admire the way you go about your business, and it, it's good. Now, who who is we go back to your development as a player and a coach who were the big influences on you as, as you go you said you probably didn't play uh, organized soccer till you're in your teens almost um but almost yeah so i, I would who, who were the ones that uh, influenced you well both my brothers um but specifically zico the one uh, the middle brother um uh, you're, you're the, the youngest you're the youngest tito i am the youngest Youngest of three, yeah. It's hard to uh, I tell. think we're five years. Five. I know it is. I hate when people ask me who's older, you or or Zico, and he's five <laughs> years older than me. But I think it's just a maturity thing they're asking about. Um, <laughs> so I, I would say him because he's probably the best player I've ever seen. 
and he was in the same boat. He really didn't get to play organized soccer yet. Uh, he went on a full ride Division One scholarship. He was drafted uh, back before that MLS number one. He he was so amazing because all he did is he decided I'm going to become a good soccer player by playing with a soccer ball. And he'd watch maybe videos of 82 World Cup or and he would just figure it out himself. And I think uh, our players can learn from that, that you don't need to be coached, you know, 24 seven to become a good player. You just need to be with the ball as much as possible. And, and that's probably my biggest influence as a player as a coach. Believe it or not, I was a terrible basketball player, but in Brazil in high school, I played basketball or tried to. And we just had to do it. We had to do a second sport. So everybody wanted to play soccer all the time, but you had to play a second sport. So I had to play basketball. I was not very good. The coach I had, Terry Havens, was amazing. And I, I really emulated him as in my coaching style because he wasn't always the most fun to play for. He was fun because he was so prepared for, tra for training or practice, I guess you call it, in basketball. He was so prepared for games. He um, really had a game plan. He stuck with it and, and gave us the confidence that it would work. And, uh, and attention to detail, I've used that word or that phrase already, but he always was very detailed in everything he did. And so he was my biggest influence uh, when it comes to coaching. That's great. That's great. We all have people that, uh, uh, you know, we admire and, and try to emulate. So. Um, Okay, you're, I have to, no, I'm not going to assume, uh, but your favorite team, we'll go, we'll go uh, national team and, and club team. I, okay. I think uh, I know the national obvious. team. The Brazilian national team, CBF, uh, with five World Cups, um, that's obviously my favorite team. We've had some dry spell lately, but my favorite team, club team, uh, it's, I'm, well, Sao Paulo, where, where I went to high school, SPFC that is but I'm going to go a different direction I'm going to say Colorado Avalanche and I am missing them so badly right now um, I was just about to go to a trip to Edmonton to watch the Avs play against the Oilers with a couple buddies and it, it got canceled a week before so uh, Brazilian national team Sao Paulo football club and locally Colorado Avalanche so you're a hockey fan that's great I love hockey good 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 how's Brazil in hockey uh, you know what? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, all right. Uh, your favorite player of all times? Favorite player of all time, and I had that written down because you sent me that question. Yeah. Um, Pele, uh, my favorite player of all time. Currently, Allison Becker, the goalkeeper, believe yes, it or not. Yes. But yes. Pele is my favorite player of all time. They're the best player of all time, I think. Everybody but Argentines believe. On, on, and on, on and off the on and off the field. He, he's the best. You know, you know yeah, I've you never can, met him. No, I've, I've met him. I've got, you know, pictures with him, autographs and so forth. Class individual. I'm jealous. Because we, can, we can talk about Maradona and some of these other players, but, you know, the whole picture of a person and a player, Pelé has to be number one in my books also. Awesome. So, Good. I, I'm glad we agree. Um. Let me see. I, I, I Like I said, I wrote down a bunch of questions here. Is there anything, is there a, a, an activity that has become your favorite that you, it's almost like your bread and butter? Um, there we go. Who are we looking at now? Uh, Any no, dogs? Golf. That, that's the golf course. Oh, that's okay. my, uh, that's my, I love golf. Um, I love to golf. And I actually, it's funny, I like to build. And fly kites, little um, okay, little paper kites. Uh, you, you, I think you're also up in the mountains too during the winter a little bit, aren't you? Yeah, I do a lot of ski I do a lot of skiing at Keystone. I so, see. Well, and that's I, that, sad that we're not doing you that. Took too. It, you took it on a different path, but I, I'm talking about activities that you run at practice. Is there a certain activity that? Oh, bread and butter oh activity? man. I, I know. I know. Golf is your number one. It, it's that's always one, every time I'm looking at Facebook. You're playing golf or skiing. So <laughs> uh, activities I like to do. Um, I love to do some one v one, two v one to goal, uh, maybe three v two to goal. Because I like to have players get as many shots in as possible, as many goal scoring opportunities, and as many 
opportunities to defend the goal or, or defend 1v1 as possible uh, because, like I've already said, we love to possess. We love to practice the possession aspect of it. But you can go – you shouldn't have a full practice where you don't get a shot on goal or an opportunity to defend somebody. So I, I say a lot of 1v1, a lot of 2v1, maybe 2v2, 3v2 to goal activities that I like to do. A bread and butter for me is 4v2, simple 4v2 warm-up because – it does work on body shape, body position, works on first touch and decision making. Um, and then you can also emphasize the pressure of defending and, and working together defensively. So I think that'd be my bread and butter activity to start. Is there, is there anything you do to try to grow as a coach? I mean, uh, read books, you know, watch things on YouTube, go to courses, seminars, or whatever, <laughs> anything? Yeah, I, I, I like to go to courses. And you and I talked about a couple of weeks ago about maybe me going to another course, and I want to. Um, I enjoy going to courses because uh, uh, when I started getting my licensing 20 years ago, I felt like I was one of the better coaches, believe it or not, out there. And then all of a sudden I go to these licenses now, and these young coaches have some really good ideas. So that's always helpful. Uh, conventions, to get to hear some of their ideas are, you know, I, feel old and antiquated when I'm like, wow, that I never thought about that. So, and then obviously writing up your own sessions. I, um, a lot of times you have so much in here that you're, when you go to training, you go and, and you just do it off the top of your head, but it is so helpful to write down sessions because you end up making adjustments to things. Uh, you end up um, finding different ways to phrase something that might hit players differently or, um, you know, a coaching point you never thought about when you write it down or when you, you, you write you a have, session. You have, to think through it. you have to think through it more, don't you? You actually have to really analyze it and think. So that's what I'd say. Well, I uh, thanks for the plug there in coaching education because I quite honestly believe it's the biggest way we can have a positive impact on the game in this country. Uh, we all talk about, you know, players leaving the games at certain ages, but uh, – as you and I know, no one should ever leave this game. Um, it's too great. And if it's presented in the proper fashion, um, it, no, no kid should ever should leave this game. Uh, it should be fun. And, uh, you know, they have walking soccer now. So I'm thinking about <laughs> a, a, a comeback, but I'm maybe waiting. I think that's called for, over 40. Well, I'm, I think I'm waiting for limping soccer to come around. And then I'm okay. Gonna, okay. You know, I agree. Nobody should leave the game. And, and I love the fact that our club, our motto is developing players for life, because I will say, and I, I always joke with, with parents, most of them don't get it. I say at least 50% uh, of your players will not play professional soccer. And some of them don't get the joke and they, they are <laughs> kind of shocked by that. But uh, the majority of our players won't play above maybe high school, but hopefully they're there for, for the life of the game, you know, their, their entire life, whether it's watching, playing and coming back to coach with us down the road. Yeah. And that's, that's what I, I mean by if they enjoy the game, if we coach them, coaching education gets better and they enjoy it. They'll be fans for life. They'll, they'll be sitting in Dick's sporting good park and watching the, the, the rapids. Um, so yeah, it's called sitting soccer. <laughs> well, I do a lot of that. Um, <laughs> I, I watch, I've been watching games left and right on TV. Um, Me too. What was I going to say? A uh, question for you. Um, is there anybody, a coach that you admire that's out there, that you follow his, uh, kind of a disciple of his or follow some of his, his, his teachings? Um, or, or well, just my favorite coach, my favorite coach is Chichi, the Brazilian national team coach, obviously. But I'm going to give a plug to another coach here in Colorado because he's worked with me in ODP. Uh, but I've also gotten to see him coach. And any time I actually get an opportunity to, to walk by and, and stop and give him a hug and then watch him coach is Luis Dominguez up in Fort Collins does yes. an amazing job. I love watching. And, and I'm jealous sometimes because I think I can get a lot out of my players. But unfortunately, sometimes I don't feel like I'm doing it the right way. And they're not, you know, maybe we push them too hard. And, and that's how we've gotten something out of it. He seems to be able to get a lot out of his players but in such a positive and fun way. I watch him coach and you can see his kids have fun. He's having fun. Uh, so that's a, a local one. And obviously I'm comparing Luis Dominguez to Chichi, the Brazilian national team coach. You should be pretty happy with that. 
Uh, Junior is outstanding. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to have this series of interviews. And he's one that's on my list to interview because uh, I think we have a lot of outstanding coaches here in Colorado. Um, the, you know, yourself, Luis, there's a, a bunch of them, a list of them. I have a list of about um, a bunch that I think we can learn from. And that's why I wanted to have this series. Um, so uh, going forward, what's anything in, in your future your plans or things you'd like to achieve? Um, you know, I, dream job maybe <clears throat> i love the job i'm doing now and maybe i i've put it off too long getting back into odp and getting back into maybe regional well we cool would we would honest. love first of all i'm gonna stop i would love to have you back in what we now call colorado select and uh marin marin mccurry has come on and helped me with that and do an outstanding job and i think it's good you know we kind of went off the path of just ODP. We're trying to make it better. Yeah. Uh, and Good. we changed, we marketed and called it Colorado select. And, uh, I think more attention's being, uh, given to it. And, uh, I think there's a, still a, a, a valuable need, uh, for it here in Colorado for players that don't go the DA route or whatever. And are Absolutely. Still it's, it's yeah. needed for sure. And yeah. I mean, get into that direction and maybe even do some regional because we all have to admit, Coaching is so much fun, but when you have an opportunity to coach elite players or, or high le high level players, you can do different things, and and it improves you as a coach. So maybe uh, a direction may um, get into national pool training or something uh, down the road. And who knows? And I I've, I'm a Brazilian, American, and Canadian citizen. So if I can't make it in one of the three, then I've got a real problem. <laughs> Last question as we wrap up here. I'm sorry, the phone's ringing here. But last question, uh, Tito. Any advice you have for young coaches? It is – you have to have a little bit of luck at times to get where you want right away, but it's going to take some time. Um, everybody wants to jump in, and we get a lot of emails <laughs> saying, hey, do you have a job, a full-time job right out of college? coaching soccer and there aren't a lot of those for as many people are coming out wanting to coach i'd say coach whatever level that you're given and do the best you can at that level and it's amazing how how you really impress people if you just commit to coaching whatever level you're given or whatever level you know whatever gender get there make sure that you do an amazing job as opposed to always be looking well that's a, a b team or a c team i wanted the, the top team I wanted and do as good of a job as you can. And, and you will turn and turn heads when they see how good you are at whatever level, because that is more of a challenge oftentimes than coaching the elite players at your club. They're not coaching at the moment. They're thinking about further down the road. Yeah, that's great advice, Correct. Tito. Um, I'm going to try to wrap this up here. Uh, I want to thank you for being my guinea pig, as I mentioned, for the first uh, interview. Uh, I think there was some great information you shared with all of Colorado's coaches and, and hopefully parents also. Uh, but uh, well, thanks for having me. I was excited to do it. Well, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm just going to say I admire you as a coach. I respect for what you do. And um, just keep on doing it because you're, you're making Colorado soccer better. Awesome. Thanks, Coach Freitag. I'll see you guys on the field soon. Okay. Bye, Tito.